Hi and welcome back. This is a follow-up video to my previous one on my Raspberry 64, which is a Commodore 64 with a Raspberry Pi stuck inside of it. So after that video I got asked a few questions on how I made it, some of the custom stuff I did, and some of the issues that I faced. This video is hopefully here to answer those. So let's open it up and have a look inside again. So as you saw last time, inside is basically just a Raspberry Pi and a Kira. We'll take a good look at the Raspberry Pi first and some of the stuff I had to do there, and then we'll move on to the Kira. This is just a simple Raspberry Pi 3. It's had uh, uh, an extension cable put in to bring the HDMI port to the back, and the same with the USB cable just here, which runs off to the side near the Kira. The only real modifications I've had to do to this, other than building the little uh, standoffs here, which are just made out of some wall plugs, is to add the on-off shim from Pimeroni uh, and remove one of the USB uh, ports here. Well, actually, one of the stacks. There's usually another two ports here. What I've had to do here is actually just simply hardwire in from four of the solder points on the board over to the Kira. Now, the reason I did that is I wanted I wanted the uh, Kira to be wired internally. In theory, I could have run a cable out and back in again. However, I really wanted this all neat and, neat and tidy inside. Now, the on-off shim here is a fantastic little device, very simple. Uh, it simply intercepts the power that comes in uh, when power is applied, uh, and then this wire here simply goes to a momentary switch, which is also over near the Kira, uh, and simply holds the power back until you hit the button and then power is applied to the Raspberry Pi. There's also an internal button here, and if I actually press it, you can see there's the Raspberry Pi powering on. So you don't have to use the external button if you don't want to, but given the way this has been done, it's the logical choice. Now the shutdown procedure is a little bit more tricky, which I'll get into in a minute, but essentially there's a background service that runs. It waits for the button to be pressed for one second and then instigates a little script which neatly shuts down the machine just like a normal computer. We'll now move on to the Kira. It's a fantastic little board which interfaces between a bunch of different uh, vintage keyboards out of computers and essentially turns them into a USB keyboard so you can plug them into a computer or in this case a Raspberry Pi. However, there's a couple of little custom things I wanted to do to this one uh, to make it a bit neater and to make the Commodore 64 still kind of feel like a Commodore 64, primarily in regards to having the power button where it should be just here uh, and the power input just here where it should be as well. However, on the Kira, this position here is taken up by an option switch which flips between uh, positional and symbolic keyboard structures. And this one here is uh, a USB port, which I just simply don't need because I've got this wired internally. So both those, uh, both the USB port and the switch were, uh, were simply desoldered from the board. However, the function of the switch is still needed to a certain degree in the sense that you still need to choose between symbolic or functional. And so if you have a look here, what I've done is simply hardwired the left-hand port and the center port to accompany this. So essentially the Kira is locked into uh, one, of the, um, one of the positions. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. You set this jumper bit here to 8-bit US, uh, the keyboard from the Commodore 64 plugs in here, and the Commodore 64 uh, LED plugs in just up there. So that's kind of it for the hardware customizations, apart from the stuff that I covered before, such as the uh, backing plates that I made to cover up the holes. Again, these are just some one millimeter uh, aluminium. Uh, that one's actually already come uh, loose again, so I need to re-glue that in. They're simply held in. Uh, by super glue. So that's kind of it for the hardware customizations that I did. It's all fairly simple, just a couple of little things to make it still feel like a Commodore 64 on the outside. We'll now take a look at some of the software things that I had to do and answer some questions. 
One of the big questions I got asked was setting up the keyboard specifically for Vice. It's actually fairly straightforward if you know what you're looking for uh, and follow the some of the instructions that I did find online. The other one is the issue that I faced with the Pimeroni uh, on-off shim, specifically that little service that runs in the background to enable the shutdown procedure. The way the Combian 64 distribution is set up for the Raspberry Pi, uh, it loads really early in the series, and so there's a bunch. You need to reorder some of the background services in order to get the Pimeroni to work properly. So we'll cover that a little later on. So one question I did get asked a few times was how to set up the Commodore 64's keyboard using the Keyra in Vice. And it's actually fairly straightforward. However, there is one little trick that I found. If we drop into Vice's menu and scroll down to Settings Management, you'll see that there's a whole section here in the middle dedicated to the key map. Now, what you want to do is you want to set the active key map to positional, not the user one, just the regular positional one, because that's what we've hardwired the key bar for. And if we back out of there, we leave the keyboard mapping to American US and we want to load a positional user key map. Now, as much as we didn't set the active key map to the user one, still loading up a user key map here is what I found to make the difference. So if we go in here, the file you're looking for is the sdlkra.vkm. VKM files are the key map files. You'll find this in the directory user local lib vice c64 uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So if we select that and we simply go save current settings, OK, and go back into the Commodore 64, we should now have a working keyboard. And that's how I accomplished that little issue. What we'll move on to now was getting the, the background service for the Pimeroni shutdown procedure to work uh, with Vice and the way it loads. And I'll go into an explanation of that. So I'm going to do this via SSH simply because it's a lot easier for me to capture. So we simply log into the, uh, to the Raspberry Pi, which is in the Commodore 64, and log in as root, which is the only account set up uh, on the Combian 64 distribution. And we simply get this. Okay, so there's a couple of things with getting the Primeroni working. Set, normally speaking, you should simply be able to go uh, curl https colon slash slash get dot pimoroni dot com slash on off shim pipe bash and it should just work. However, because the Combian distros had so much cut out of it to get it to boot real quick and all the rest of it, you need to actually put a couple of things back in. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install a couple of things. So the first thing you're going to want is uh, sudo and then nano. You're also going to want curl and you're going to want to compile like GCC. So run that, get all those packages installed and then we can move forward. However, it's still not quite that simple. If we still then go curl https colon slash slash get dot pimeroni dot com slash on off shim pipe bash, it will go and it will pull down the script that's necessary. And then it throws this error here, which is running as root, please log on as a regular user but still do it under pseudo rights. Now, I'm not sure why, but that's the way it's set up. But there isn't any other users actually set up on the Combian. So we need to go user add, I'll put me in. Now, I've already done this, so if I actually do it, it's going to go lurch already exists. Uh, and we then give the lurch account a password, password lurch, give it a password twice, and off you go. Now what you're going to want to do is actually add lurch to the sudoers file. So if we go nano etc sudoers and go in here 
And if we scroll down, it's, it's obviously already been done for me because I've already done all this. But there you go. See, lurch, all eagles, all, all, all. Just make sure you've got the username right the way, the, for the user you've cr created uh, and the syntax right there. And that's all you have to do in that regard. So we'll exit out of Nano. Now what we want to do is we want to switch to that new user. So we go switch user Lurch. Now because Lurch has never actually been logged into properly before, you just get this dollar sign. So we'll spark up Bash and that will give us something a bit more usable. Now what we want to do is we want to, it's probably here somewhere, no it's not, all right. So now we want to do curl https colon slash slash get dot pimaroni dot com slash on off shim pipe bash now we can run it now it'll pull down the script and kick off do I wish to continue yes and it's actually the script that then does the pseudo switch so if I was to now put in my password and um, and it would continue to run the install. Now I'm not going to run it myself, but it's fairly, it just runs through and it's done. Uh, I'm not going to do it again because uh, I don't want to break everything I've had to do. Now that, now that the actual script is done, we'll just take a look at something. We exit out of being lurch and we go back to being root. And if we have a look in uh, CD, ETC, RC, and I think it's in 2.d, and we have a look here. And if you have a look there, we've got S02 clean shut D. Now the problem with that is, is because it's in the RC2 directory, it's actually starting after Combian. And Combian actually, well, it's actually starting under Vice, after Vice. So the problem is, is when Vice loads, it loads interactively, so nothing else that's meant to load after that actually loads. So you're gonna, you have to move where the, cl the clean shut D script actually starts. So if we back out of that directory and we have a look in the RCS directory, you'll see a funny one there called S02 AAA battery supported remote. Don't ask me why, but that's actually the startup script for Vice. Now, when it's initially done, it's actually S01. So what you need to do is you need to go move S01 AAA battery supported remote, and you will need to move it to S02. And that shuffles it down just one spot um, in the boot order. Okay, it's obviously not going to do it now because I've already moved it and S01 does now no longer exist. However, as you can see there, if you have a look further up, S01 clean shut D. Now I've already done it, but the command you want to do is you want to go move and you need to go back a level RC2 uh, S01 no, it was 2 clean shut D, and we now want to move it to the current directory to S01 clean shut D. Now I've already done it, and if I do it again it's going to break, but that's what you want to do, and essentially what you're doing is you're moving the clean shutdown service to load before Vice, and so that means it's running on the back in the background. And after a simple reboot, that's how I fixed that issue. And so that's how I built my Raspberry 64. And now it's simply a case of hitting the power button exactly the way you would on an original. It powers up. You see the little LED, maybe. And off it goes. And it boots straight into Vice and you've got yourself a Commodore 64 running on modern hardware. And when you're finished, you simply press the button for a second, the LED stops flashing, and it does a proper shutdown procedure. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.